heredity all living organisms are capable of producing offsprings of their own kind by the process of reproduction the offsprings are similar to their parents because the characters or traits of the parents are transferred to the offsprings during the process of reproduction this passing of traits from parents to offsprings is called inheritance or heredity the offsprings may be similar to their parents but not exactly identical to their parents that means there are certain differences among the parents and offsprings these differences are called variations variations the differences in the characteristics or traits of the individuals of same species is called as variations variations are observed in both sexual and asexual reproduction but the variations in sexual reproduction are more compared to variations in asexual reproduction here is a group of sugarcane plants that reproduce by asexual reproduction and here there is a group of dogs that reproduce by sexual reproduction we notice very less variations among the sugarcane plants but we can observe a lot of variations among this group of dogs accumulation of variations during reproduction the variations in an organism are passed to their next generation at the same time in every generation certain new variations are also formed in that organism in this way the variations get accumulated in the organisms over generations these accumulated variations contribute to evolution of populations importance of variations sometimes variations become advantageous to the organisms and help them in their survival for example a variant of bacteria can withstand high temperature this variation helps it to survive better in a heat wave rules of heredity the traits are inherited according to the rules of heredity by studying the rules of heredity we can understand the patterns of inheritance types of traits the traits are of two types they are inherited traits and acquired traits inherited traits inherited traits are the characteristics or traits passed from parents to offsprings inherited traits come from the genetic information passed down from parents during the process of reproduction inherited traits are not influenced by the environment they are fixed at birth these traits bring changes in the dna of an organism these traits helps in the process of evolution examples of inherited traits are eye color skin color hair color shape of the ear lobe etc acquired traits acquired traits are the traits that an individual develops during their lifetime as a result of their experiences behavior or environmental factors they are not inherited genetically the dna of an organism is unchanged due to these traits these traits do not help in the process of evolution examples skills like speaking different languages dancing playing musical instruments etc rules for the inheritance of traits now let us understand how do the traits pass from generation to generation the inheritance of traits takes place through the transfer of genetic material from parents to offsprings the father and the mother contribute equal amounts of genetic material or dna to the child during the process of reproduction the dna has smaller units or segments called genes which carry the information about different traits what is a gene it is a segment of dna that determines a particular character or trait for the dna has genes for different traits like eye color type of ear lobe etc in the same way mother dna also has genes for traits like eye color type of ear lobe etc that means the offsprings or babies get two genes for each trait that is one from father and one from mother for example the father eyes are brown and the mother eyes are blue the baby will get both brown and blue color genes that means for one trait that is the eye color the baby will have two genes this kind of alternate forms of genes for a single character are called alleles 
But here, what would be the color of the eyes of the baby? Brown or blue? The eye color of the baby will be brown. Because the brown eye color gene is dominant than the blue eye color gene. So the brown color is expressed out. Dominant trait. The trait that is expressed out when one of the allele is dominant or both the alleles are dominant. Recessive trait. The trait that is expressed out when both the alleles are recessive. This is the basic idea of inheritance of traits. The study of rules of inheritance was begun in 19th century by a famous scientist called Gregor John Mendel. Mendel was the first to make a systemic study of patterns of inheritance of traits in pea plants. He proposed three laws of inheritance which are called as Mendel's laws of inheritance. Why did Mendel selected pea plants for his experiment? Mendel chose pea plants which are called Pisum sativum for his experiments for several reasons. 1. Short life cycle Pea plants have a relatively short life cycle and produce a large number of seeds. This allowed Mendel to observe multiple generations within a relatively short period, enabling him to study inheritance patterns across several generations. 2. Pea plants are bisexual. That means every flower has both male and female reproductive parts. So, self-pollination takes place easily in them. At the same time, cross-pollination also can be done easily by hand. Number 3. Pea plants exhibit clear and distinct traits such as seed color, flower color and plant height. These traits have two distinct forms that is yellow or green seeds, purple or white flowers. So, making it easy to differentiate and observe the variations. Mendel used different sets of contrasting characters of pea plants like plant height, tall or short, seed color, yellow or green, seed shape, round or wrinkled, flower color that is white or purple, etc. Mendel's Experiments Monohybrid cross A monohybrid cross is a genetic cross between two individuals that differ in a single trait. For example, a tall pea plant and a short pea plant. Mendel selected a pure breed of tall pea plant and crossed it with a pure breed of short pea plant. Pure breed tall means both the alleles for the trait plant height are tall and tall. They are represented by capital T and capital T. Pure breed short means both the alleles for the trait plant height are short. Here they are represented by small t, small t. When these two plants are crossed, in the F1 generation, all tall plants are produced. Here we can see all these plants got one allele tall and the second one short. Since tall allele is the dominant one, the plants express at the trait tallness. So in F1 generation, all plants are tall. Now this F1 generation plants are self-pollinated. Let us understand the outcomes with the help of a Punnett square. The possible combinations of F2 generation are like this. Capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, small t, capital T, small t, small t. So here, out of these four possible combinations, three of them are tall and one is short. So the phenotypic ratio of F2 generation is 3 is to 1. Phenotypic ratio means the ratio based on the physical appearance. This is the outer appearance. If we look at the genotypic ratio of the F2 generation, genotypic ratio means the combination of alleles that they have for a trait. Here, 1 capital T capital T means both the alleles are of same type that is tall. So, it is a homozygous tall. Homozygous means having both same type of alleles. So, it is a pure breed tall pea plant. Next, we got 2 capital T and small t's. These are heterozygous tall. Means they have one dominant and one recessive allele. One capital T, one small t. Next we have one small t, small t. This is homozygous short. Here both the alleles are short. So this is a pure breed of short pea plant. So the genotypic ratio of F2 generation is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now let us see the dihybrid cross in pea plants. 
in dihybrid cross we consider two pairs of contrasting characters mendel crossed a pure breed of round yellow seeds with a pure breed of green wrinkled seeds in f1 generation mendel got all round yellow seed plants all of them are heterozygous round and yellow now let us observe the f2 generation when the f1 plants are self pollinated the possible outcomes are like this so here in the f1 generation we got round and yellow 9 round and green 3 wrinkled and yellow 3 wrinkled and green 1 so the phenotypic ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 mendel's laws mendel's law of dominance here is a heterozygous tall pea plant means it is a tall pea plant but it has two different alleles for the character plant head one tall allele and two short allele even though the plant has short allele or gene in it its tallest is expressed out because the tall allele is dominant than the short allele this is the first law of mendel mendel's law of dominance states that in a heterozygous organism one trait will conceal the presence of another trait for the same characteristic next mendel's law of segregation the parent cell will have two genes for controlling a character but when it forms gametes each gamete will have only one allele or gene for that character for example a man has two alleles for his hair color like brown and black in his cell but his gametes or sperm cells will have either brown or black allele only this is called as mendel's law of segregation during the formation of gamete each gene separates from each other so that each gamete carries only one allele for each gene next we see the law of independent assortment for the character color of the seed the parent has two alleles dominant allele yellow and recessive allele green for the character shape of the seed the parent has two alleles dominant allele round and recessive allele wrinkled if the dominant allele yellow is passed to the gamete for color for shape dominant round or recessive wrinkle any one allele can be passed to the gamete that means one allele of a particular character do not influence the inheritance of alleles of other character this is law of independent assortment the alleles of two different genes get sorted into gametes independently of one another how do these traits get expressed cells have dna in the nucleus this dna is the information source for making proteins inside these cells the part of the dna that has information for making one particular protein is called gene of that protein that means gene is a segment of the dna that has information to make a particular protein for example we know that plant growth is affected by plant growth hormone but for the proper production of this hormone an enzyme is required this enzyme is a protein and its production is controlled by a gene in the dna if the gene is proper then sufficient growth hormone is produced and the plant will be tall if the gene is altered and the production of enzyme is less automatically less growth hormone is produced which makes the plant short this is how genes control the physical characteristics so we understood that each trait is controlled by two genes but these two genes do not present in the same dna strand our dna is coiled into the form of chromosomes chromosomes are present in pairs so the two alleles of a specific trait are not present on the same chromosomes normally our cells have two sets of chromosomes but when gametes are formed only one set of chromosomes are transferred to them because gametes are haploid in nature so out of the two alternative pairs of genes for specific character only one enters the gamete when this gamete fuses with the other gamete then they get the pair of genes for that character sex determination do you know how the sex of a newborn baby is determined sex of a newborn is determined by different factors in different species of animals in reptiles like snakes and crocodiles the sex of the newborn will be based on environmental temperature in case of snails they can change their sex so sex is not determined by genes in these animals but in humans sex is genetically determined that means the genes inherited from the parents 
decides the sex of the newborn baby. Each human cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. Out of these 23 pairs, 22 pairs are autosomes and one pair is sex chromosomes. Females have a pair of same kind of sex chromosomes XX, whereas males have a different pair of sex chromosomes X and Y. So females are XX and males are XY. Gametes or sex cells are haploid in nature. That means they have only 23 chromosomes. Out of 22 are autosomes and one sex chromosome. In males, when the gametes are formed, only one sex chromosome is passed to them. It can be either X or Y. So some sperm cells are formed with X and some with Y. Whereas in case of female gametes, all are X. So all egg cells carry X sex chromosome. During reproduction, if the sperm cell with Y sex chromosome fuses with the egg cell, it forms a zygote with XY sex chromosomes. XY means the baby will be a boy. If the sperm cell with X sex chromosome fuses with the egg cell, it forms a zygote with XX sex chromosomes, means the baby will be a girl. Thus, the sex of the child will be determined by the chromosomes that they inherit from their father. This is all about the heredity in human beings. Thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to Great Booster channel. Press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Check the description to find links of other useful videos. Check the end screens for our new videos.